So I've just been going through all your um, information and um, everything on, that you've answered on the questionnaire and on your ECG. So we'll start with your questionnaire. And I was happy to see that um, you hadn't reported anything on there that I was concerned about at all. So no symptoms, and no family history. I see that you do 22 hours of um, uh, exercise per week, which is obviously uh, quite, a, quite a huge amount compared to what, no, what most people normally do. Um, the question is a really important part of the screening process because it can give us a lot of information before we've even done any tests. Mm -hmm. Um, and in particular, worrying symptoms that you look out for are um, symptoms during exercise, particularly blacking out during exercise. That's uh, something that really causes um, causes us concern. But as I say, I'm, I'm happy to see that you have none of these um, worrying symptoms. In addition, the other important thing is the family history, because a lot of the conditions that we're trying to pick up um, on a screening are inherited mm -hmm. from one generation to the next. So often you can get a lot of information just by looking at somebody's family history. So I was happy to see that that was all good. And we've also discussed your ECG mm -hmm. while you were having it, Lawrence, and again, that looked completely within normal limits for somebody who does your amount of exercise. Um, the what, thing- What are you actually looking at here? Right, so we're looking at your, so the first simplest thing we look at is your heart rate and your heart rhythm. Uh, so that's the way the electrical activity is initiated in your heart, and they, they're both normal. We then also look at um, various different things. So the important thing to, to realise is that athletic training does produce changes on that can be picked up on your ECG, which are due to cardiac remodelling. So your heart is just like any other muscle in the body. When you make it work more, it becomes bigger. And as it becomes bigger, changes occur also on the ECG and on the scan sure. simply because it's adapting to the amount of activity you have to produce. Now, a lot of these changes are normal f for that amount of exercise that you do. However, the, some of the changes can overlap with problems. problems, with conditions that we see that are inherited and that can cause problems in, um, in particularly in athletes. So it's very important that somebody who's got a lot of experience looks at um, an ECG of an athlete to distinguish those changes that occur with normal athletic training from those that might sign signify a problem. As I say, that your ECG looked completely within normal limits. Um, there was nothing on there at all that I was concerned about. But I'll, I'll, give, I'll show you an example of an ECG from somebody else where we, we did see, see some changes. So if you look at one of the things that we're trying to pick up, apart from electrical disorders, are disorders with the heart muscle. And I think David um, mentioned one particular condition called arrhythmogenic right ventricular cardiomyopathy. Yeah. yeah, that's a problem with the right side of the heart. Um, as you can see on your ECG, these humps at the end called the T waves are all pointing upwards, and that's the correct normal position. However, if you see on this ECG, they're pointing in the wrong way, so downwards. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean that this ECG is abnormal. Um, part of our research interest is looking at the effect of ethnicity on how your heart adapts to exercise. And through a lot of work that myself and um, my predecessors have done under the supervision of Professor Sham, we've come to realise that black athletes, athletes of African, Afro-Caribbean origin, do develop more ECG changes than Caucasian athletes. And one of the changes they can develop is exactly this pattern. And uh, we know that from long-term follow-up, when, when we see this kind of pattern, after extensive investigation and following up people over a number of years, we found no problems with them. In other words, we think that these changes, we've got quite good evidence now that these changes are related to your ethnicity and, and the way that somebody, a, a black athlete, uh, adapts to exercise compared to a Caucasian. So that, that was your ECG. And David also has gone through your... Um, echocardiogram with you, but that again looked within normal limits. What we did see was that the wall thicknesses were a bit bigger. So the normal wall thickness in a in the general population will be a maximum of about 12 millimetres. Yours are going up to 14. Now again, that doesn't mean that that's abnormal. It just is in keeping with the amount of exercise that you do. Sometimes a, a big wall thickness can signify underlying conditions such as hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. However, we normally see other features on the echo scan when 
that condition is present and we saw none of those in you sure. today. So obviously again that's all reassuring. So it just showed that your heart, as I explained before, as you exercise the heart more it becomes bigger and that's exactly what we sh we've shown, we've seen on the echo. And in ath athletes of, of your ethnicity they tend to get bigger hearts anyway and thicker walls too. Okay. So I think this is all in keeping with the amount of ath athletic activity you do and um, uh, and I'm not surprised to see that those changes at all. Everything I've seen so far all looks normal and all looks within the amount of athletic activity you, you produce. That's all very reassuring. Um, as I say, we, in somebody who's an elite athlete such as yourself, we always go back and look at everything again with Professor Sharma, who's a world expert in sports cardiology, and we'll send you a final results through the post in about four weeks' time. Yeah. Okay, do you have any questions? Uh, yeah, um, what would an abnormal chart look like? Yeah, so as I explained, your ECG looked normal and although this ECG has some changes, I also think that that's normal for that person. Things that we look out for that, that um, get us worried are um, when the ST segment is depressed. So this, this area here, the line here, if that's below the baseline, that's something that causes concern. Mm -hmm. um, if you can see these... Um, on the ECG, these downward deflections there, if they're very big, what we term Q waves, they again can signify abnormal conditions. And if these T waves, which oh, are pointing, really, really yeah, well, if not, not necessarily if they're really far down, but if they extend into other areas, such as these other leads, oh, yeah. then that causes us Concerns concern, yeah. Sure. Okay, all right. Good stuff. Brilliant, Brilliant. well, yeah. thanks for coming thanks today. And, um, Appreciate the work. Nice, nice to meet you. Glad Thank to you. know my heart's okay. <laughs>